This is the piece of furniture I will be working on today. As you can see, I've already started it. The finished look on this piece, I want to do um, an industrial rustic look. I've done it before and it's been very popular the way I do it. So I figured as I do this piece, I will show you how I do it. I've already started, as I said, I took it outside, sanded the top and the front of all of the drawers. I'd, it's not perfect, but that's fine for the industrial look I'm looking for. Now I'm going to apply um, is a glaze. It's an aged glaze by Rust-Oleum. Um, this is water-based, so I can play with it a little bit. That's why I like it, rather than a stain. So, But it also means at the very end, you do need to put a clear coat of something on top to protect. So I'm going to bring it in close. So you can see exactly what I like to use instead of stain. It comes out looking a little like stain, but it's not. And what I like to do also is apply it with a cloth. And I just keep one cloth that I use just for the stain. And uh, just, that's how I do it basically. So if I'm doing a big piece, I will pour a little on, clean up the can with my cloth, and then just wipe. You can go in any direction. The thicker you have it on, the thicker it's going to be. The more you wipe it out, the thinner it will be. So just keep working on it however you want it to be. If you find it is a little too thick, too dark, put some water on it. If you find that it's not dark enough, let it dry and do another one or two coats. I'll show you a little bit on, if I'm doing the fronts of the drawers, I just put a little bit on my actual cloth and just rub it onto the drawer. Now, I tend to not know if I, it's dark enough or light enough until it's actually dried. So sometimes I'll let it dry overnight and then go back to it and see what I want to do. Just work it into the wood, into the crevices with your cloth. And I'm going to do this on all the drawers and finish doing the top. And as I say, once you've got it even how you want it to be, let it dry overnight. And we'll get on with the next stage. I'm just going to finish this up and get all these drawers and everything the colour I'd like to see it. And I will show you. So I've got the top fin finished here. Now I am using an IOD ink pad. I'm using the black and I'm just going to go just loosely tapping around the edges and on the top doing the corners quite deep and then thinner on the sides. I want it kind of a line but not a, an exact line i want it a shadow line is the best way to describe it so i go around the whole thing and this is the look i'm looking for and then the top now is done and i'm going to just put a clear coat on this and i'm going to do the same effect on all the drawers and also do some actual letters on the drawers we'll do that next Okay, so we're going to be doing the drawers. I'm not going to show you all the drawers or else that would be a really long, boring video. So I'm just going to do the first one and you'll get the concept of how to do it. I use the IOD letter stamps and this is the uppercase ones. I use the IOD ink, which is black. I don't sell it. I'm just, that's the products I use. That's what I have. And one of the things I find 
is important to me is the words can be very simple but please check the spelling because as I'm from England but I want this piece to be American so I'm doing American English and that can make a difference on some things so check your spelling and make sure you have things the right way up and also make sure you have them spelt right so for um, the first top drawer I want it to say crate as in a crate um, what I like to do is the industrial rustic look I like to make it look like it was a crate before a big shipping crate and then they made it into a rustic dresser. That's my concept. Now for people to get that, I find just literally putting the word crate on it works. <laughs> Simple is always the best, right? So that's what I do. So I'm gonna get my letters where I want them to be on here, kind of put them in position where you want them and then we will get them ready. I tend to do one letter at a time, just for the fact that my letters are getting old. I've used them lots. They don't necessarily stick onto the, uh, the plastic backing easily as much. So I just do it one at a time. So I get my spacing ready. And the key for spacing with words is get it ready, get it kind of how you want it, this does not need to be perfect. Again, it's rustic. Um, but try to use the middle letter first and go that way and then that way and you then stay more centered easily. If you get it ready and then start here, you tend to shift that way. If you start here, you tend to shift this way. So try, if you're doing one letter at a time, do the middle one first. So we're gonna take the A and I'm just going to use the IOD ink, put it on. This is the black I'm using. You want the black because you want it to be able to see it. And then put it down where you want it. Use this. This is your best friend when you're doing stamping. Always use the backing to push down with. That's how you get it to not shift as it badly and to get it more even. Using only your fingers without this, you always end up missing a spot. And then peel up and peel up your letter. And it is done. I'm going to do the next letter. I'm going to go this way, so the R. If you find that your letters are too dark, it's okay, you'll be able to sand them a little bit later. And if they're too light, then just put some more ink on your pad. Get it in place. Try and get it as straight as you can. But again, I'm not bothered about it being perfect because this is going to be rustic. Push it down. And then pull it off. Do this letter here, the C. And again, as I say, I'm going to do different, different words on different drawers. The first drawer, I like to literally put the word crate just for the simplicity. That's what then people focus on and they're like, oh, it's an old crate. Well, no, it wasn't, but I'm glad you kind of got that image in your mind now to enjoy the dresser. So my, the second drawer, I like to do kind of numbers. So I do the pretend weight of the crate, the pretend size of the crate, maybe the pretend age of the crate, some numbers on there, something a little different. On the third drawer, I like to do it a little whimsical. Most shipping crates, boxes, whatever you find shipping, they generally have the word either fragile or the words this way up. So I usually do one or the other. I like to do the this way up and I always like to do it upside down on purpose. Um, because whenever you get something shipped to you, 
you always find it's fragile and it says this way up and it's never the right way up. So I find that a little whimsical, a little fun to do and I always do that kind of thing on the third draw. So that's what I do for the third draw. The fourth last draw, I kind of do it that it's the shipping label. So the address. Now rather than putting someone's actual address, I like to do P.O. box. P.O. and then the word box and then some numbers. And then I'll do something like maybe Chicago or New York or something that I find is a city that's industrial. And that's why I want everything on here to be American spelling because I'm doing an American address. So it comes together. You know, if I was doing something a little bit more English, I would make sure I use the English spelling for a word. So that's one thing I just find for myself personally. I always make sure, even with the simplest word like crate, I just look it up. I make sure I've got the spelling right and everything else. It may be the simplest word, but when you're doing stamping like this on a piece of furniture, you don't want to be second guessing yourself or have it spelt wrong because it, you know, once you've sealed it, it's quite permanent and a little bit hard to change. It's a piece of furniture. All right. So there we have the word crate. And uh, I may give it a little tiny bit of sanding very lightly because I want to distress it when it's dry. But that's pretty much how I want it. So now, like the top, I'm going to go around with the black pad. I'm going to go around the edges. Quite thick on the corners. And not quite as thick on the edges. But I just want it to have that shadowing, rustic look to it. Just use the pad. Now another way I do this is when I'm doing my books and I'm doing the sides of the books, I do this again on the books. It gives a little bit of a vintage look, I find. And because it's a permanent ink um, and it's easy to use the pad to do it, I find it gives off a nice look. Now on the books I use the stone grey, but on these darker pieces of furniture I use the black. And there you go. So I'm going to, when this ink is dry, which takes a few hours, it is a permanent drink, uh, ink. And then I sand, I'm gonna sand the letters a little bit. And then I will put a clear coat over the whole thing. And then this drawer is finished other than we need to put the handles on. And we'll do those next. Okay, for the rest of this dresser, we're almost at the end here. I'm going to paint all the sides and the front part here between the drawers and the legs, all of it with this paint, which is a chalk based charcoal gray, my usual charcoal gray paint. That's what I'm going to be doing. And I'm just going to be using a chalk paint brush and just slapping it on and try to get it quite thick because I want it to be just one coat. I'm going to try and be careful, but I'm not too worried about it being perfectly careful because I've already on here put the clear coat on. So if I accidentally get the chalk paint on the clear coat, I just need a damp cloth and wipe it off. So that's a lot easier than masking it all up. So I'm just literally you know, painting the rest of this piece, this chalk, paint, charcoal grey. I find it a nice industrial colour and it uh, goes well with the uh, wood look, it goes well with the stencils and uh, it just comes together nicely. So when I've finished I will show you, after I've painted this, I'll put a clear coat on all where I've painted, put on the handles, and we're done. So stay tuned to see what it looks like. 
And this piece is now finished, dry, and now it's time to stage. That's the fun part. But I figured before I'd stage it, I'd just give you a quick look at it uh, before it's staged up and pretty up. So we have the top here, we're very rustic. And then each of the drawers. And just show you here the sides just the plain charcoal grey, which shows off nicely the woodwork of the drawers and the top. So I'm going to do some staging on it, some pictures on it, and stay tuned to watch them. Hope you enjoyed this video of how to, and uh, if you get a chance to do one yourself, please send me the pictures. Put them in the comments or send them to me. I'd love to see. This is Julie from Rustic Cottage Co. I'm Julie from Rustic Cottage Co. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and uh, thumbs up. Thank you.